In this video, I'm going to show you a three camera church video streaming configuration that can be operated by one person. Hi, I'm Jim Roden. Welcome to my configuration tutorial. One of the biggest challenges to church video streaming week after week is the staffing issue. Whether you pay someone or rely on volunteers, getting someone to show up reliably week after week isn't an easy task. This configuration, while not the least expensive one available, does offer the advantage of requiring only a single operator and not sacrificing multiple camera angles. This configuration provides for three remote control cameras and additional cameras can be installed if funds permit. For this configuration, plan on spending around $11,000 based on December 2020 prices. Watch my channel for less expensive configurations but requiring multiple operators. Look in the show notes below for a link of a list of equipment items and current prices for this configuration being discussed. This video is not sponsored by any vendor. The vendors listed are shown as examples of equipment known to work, but other makes and models may work just as well. Of course, I don't guarantee that these configurations will meet your needs. Please study the OEM specifications and your own requirements before beginning. So let's get started. First, let's look at an overview of the configuration. Starting on the left hand side, we have a router connected to the internet, then that's connected to a switch. The switch is a power over ethernet or PoE switch, which provides power to some of our components, simplifying our setup. The switch is connected to three pan, tilt, zoom or PTZ cameras. These cameras are operated by remote control and only require one network cable, CAT6, from the switch. One operator can easily control all three cameras. The switch is also connected to a PTZ joystick controller using a single CAT6 cable. This unit provides our remote control of the three cameras. The switch also goes to a PC computer using a single CAT6 cable. Shown here is a desktop computer which is less expensive than a laptop and provides for more flexible expansion as needs come up. Of course you may substitute your laptop computer if needs indicate. The computer is connected to an X-Keys video switcher using a USB cable which provides video switching between cameras as needed during production. The computer is also connected to an audio mixer using a USB cable which has inputs for sound from your existing PA system or additional wireless or wired microphones. Now that we've seen the overall configuration, let's take a look at some of the individual components. First let's look at the PoE switch which stands for Power Over Ethernet. This switch is connected to your router using a CAT6 cable. This particular model has 16 local area network or LAN connectors, but only 8 of these provide power to the device plugged in. In our configuration this is plenty, we only need 4, but if you add additional cameras you could run out of PoE slots, so plan ahead. Now let's look at the PTZ camera. This camera is manufactured by PTZ Optics. The model shown here works on PoE power, meaning that the CAT6 cable provides the power from the switch. The power supply shipped with the unit is not needed for operation. This unit is compatible with a standard known as the Network Device Interface or NDI. This makes the camera reachable over the local area network, or LAN, for remote control and video content upload. The camera shown has 20x zoom, 
which works well in a room about 100 feet across. You can save a bit by using a 12x zoom or if you want super close up zooming you can spend a bit more and get 30x. Keep in mind that additional zooming can lead to greater camera shake under some circumstances. Once you get your camera on your network you'll run a utility on the PC which allows you to attach the camera from a web browser or app on the computer. You'll want to set the camera to a fixed LAN address so you'll always know this address. Now let's look at the back of the camera. The only connection used here is the one on the left marked LAN, making it extremely easy to set up. Now let's look at the PTC joystick IP controller. This unit also plugs into the PoE switch. The joystick connects to several cameras over the local area network or LAN. You configure each camera to a specific address such as 192.168.1.101. Once all the cameras are configured you can specify a camera, say Cam 1, and move it left, right, up, down, zoom, in and out. This is also called pan, tilt, zoom or PTZ which is where the camera and the company gets its name. Once you find a setting in terms of the PTZ parameters you can save the setting to a preset. Up to 256 settings can be saved on each camera making it extremely fast to switch to a particular favorite scene. While this functionality can be provided in software such as vMix or OBS, it is cumbersome to operate with the mouse. The joystick controller adds a great deal of ease to the operation. Next, let's look at the X keys controller. As we saw in the joystick, the functions of the X key controller can be handled in software such as vMix. In fact, you'll want to learn how to make scene changes in software. However, for more convenience of frequently used changes, the X Keys controller is an outstanding addition to the studio. The X Keys controller is attached to the computer with USB and configured in the vMix software. Then switches can be done in vMix that can be carried out by keyboard shortcut keys. The X Keys controller is programmed to repeat the keyboard shortcuts by using a single key on the keypad. For example, I use it for preview changes. So if I want to see camera one on the vMix preview screen, the left panel, I preset the key I've labeled blue one, bottom left key for me. The T bar is very handy for fading the preview window to the active window in vMix. I'll show a clip in a few minutes that demonstrates this. Now we'll look at the audio mixer. I use a Mackie Pro FX22 mixer. I'm showing the 16 channel model here. Your choice will depend on the number of audio inputs you want to mix. It connects to the computer through a USB connector. You probably have a PA system already. You may choose to take an output from your PA plug it into the input of the mixer. This output source would then get mixed into your production in the software you use such as vMix or OBS. You might also want to add some wireless microphones. I'm using some Shure BLX and ULX microphones. You may also want to plug wired XLR microphones into the mixer, use recorded sound, and so forth. The PC is the next item we'll talk about. You'll want to use a computer with a fast processor, a good amount of memory, and a large disk drive. These requirements are driven by the requirement to stream over the internet. You don't want your streaming to overtax your computer resources. You may want to get a second video card and a second video monitor. I find this useful so I can watch my streaming channel live at the same time that I'm broadcasting. Now let's look at software. 
I'm a huge fan of open so source software, so naturally I looked at open broadcast software or OBS. While OBS is excellent for what it does, out of the box it can't handle NDI. Yes, you can install an NDI plugin if you're up for the task. Since I'm presenting an off-the-shelf configuration in this video, I decided not to use OBS here. Wirecast is paid software and very popular for streaming. Wirecast Studio works with NDI for $5.99. For built-in control of PTZ, without the joystick controller, you'll need Wirecast Pro at $7.99. VMix is also paid software and works well with NDI. The HD model is $350. The 4K model is $700 and has built-in PTZ control, eliminating the necessity of the joystick controller. However, for ease of use, I recommend the joystick controller rather than mouse control of PTZ. So in both cases, the less expensive software version is a good option. But for this convert configuration, we're going to work with VMix HD at 350. In addition to streaming software, you'll also need a streaming platform. Many options are available, such as YouTube, Facebook, and Restream. But for this configuration, I chose Vimeo. This platform offers many advantages, such as offline storage, no advertising, multiple destinations, and not taking down your video for presumed copyright infringement. This is sometimes done on social media in spite of a licensing agreement for streaming that you may have an effect. For this configuration I stream direct to Vimeo and place one of their embed codes on the church website for parishioners to watch the video both live and later on demand. I also include a link for watching directly on Vimeo. In addition, I include the additional destinations of Facebook and YouTube. You'll also need an account with an Internet Service Provider, or ISP, for your Internet access. You probably already have this, but look at the speed and increase it if you start to have trouble with your streaming. Check your upload speed with a service such as testmy.net slash upload. The upload speed at my location is 19 megabits per second. As long as your upload speed is two or three times your streaming bitrate, you shouldn't have a problem. The Vimeo dashboard has a streaming health panel you can use to determine if your, ne if your network is causing a bottleneck. I usually stream the video at 1080p using 2.4 megabits per second bitrate. Well that covers the configuration of three PTZ cameras. Now let's look at the configuration in action. Here we are in the studio and on the X keys controller I just selected the uh, first camera and now I'm selecting the first camera on the uh, joystick controller. Now I'm going to do some panning to the right and then some panning to the left. You can see it on the preview window, which is the last left window that's in the vMix software. And I'm doing a little tilting up and I'm zooming out. And now I'm going to do a cut from the preview window to the active window. That's from the left to the right. Well, that's it for now. If you enjoyed this video, please click like and click subscribe if you want to see more. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.